A new Biden campaign ad released around the D-Day commemoration features veterans giving their thoughts on Donald Trump, and here it is. A good commander in chief is somebody who gives a my name is Curtis Register. I served in the United States Marine Corps. My name is Ed McCabe. I served from the 1990s into 2014. Okay, my name is Matthew McLaughlin. I was a Navy pilot for eight years. It is the first time I'm shaking the hands of a president of the United States. It was pretty uh, impactful to me to see an individual that supports troops, not just on the battlefield, but when we return home. I see a man in Joe Biden who accepts accountability and responsibility. And when I see his predecessor, Donald Trump, I see a man who is only in this for himself. Who criticizes veterans, who doesn't see it important for him to go to the funerals. Donald Trump has zero accountability in his life. He's a draft dodger, simple as that. I think the election is the difference between authoritarianism and democracy. And I came to see a president that cares about maintaining democracy. Donald Trump, he's not fit to be commander in chief. He's not fit to lead a squad and he's definitely not fit to be president of the United States. So I think that's a very typical sort of Biden ad that it draws a contrast. It's not over the top with dramatic lighting and music and they're not, it's not bombastic. It's sort of just, I think a fair assessment of who Donald Trump is when it comes to that. And that's why I'm curious whether Brett thinks that it'll succeed. I wanna throw out a few other facts though. You had referenced one of these earlier in the show. So Trump avoided the draft during the Vietnam War. He had four deferments for college and one for bone spurs that affected him in the run up to the draft, but have never affected him ever again in his life ever since then. He said to Howard Stern that avoiding sexually transmitted infections was his personal Vietnam. He has repeatedly denigrated veterans, including Senator John McCain. He said, I like people who weren't captured, which is totally how politicians are supposed to talk about POWs. He has reportedly referred to Americans killed in World War I as losers and suckers and didn't want wounded veterans around him at an event because it quote, doesn't look good for me. By the way, the losers and suckers line was confirmed by his own former chief of staff, John Kelly. I'll also remind people, not a lot of people remember this one. Uh, presidents are supposed to call the widows of soldiers who die in missions abroad, and he did that. And ended up getting into a fight with one of the soldier's widows when he apparently could not remember the name of the soldier who had died. Rather than apologizing, he took to Twitter to claim that he, quote, spoke his name from beginning without hesitation. So that definitely made the widow feel better about Trump having sent her husband to die and then immediately be forgotten by a guy who doesn't care at all about any of these people. Brett, what do you think? Is this the yeah. sort of ad that you think is gonna break through? And that's not his own, his only run in. Those aren't his only run ins with gold star families where his own like self love blinds him from anyone's understanding of someone else's love of country. This is the stuff, I, I think this is a great ad. I hope it gets through to people. This is the kind of ad that will, Surprise the hell out of a lot of folks on the right. Like the right has become this very strange hodgepodge, as has the left in many ways. But like the ability for folks to see faces that you wouldn't necessarily equate with someone who would vote for a Democrat as the narrative of, you know, you guys are hate America and you hate our troops. Well, famously, Joe Biden finishes every every speech with God protect our troops. He says it. Now, there's a lot of people on the left who are like, "Oh my God, I roll my eyes at that." But that's something that, on a base level, you got to understand. And Joe Biden's son, Bo, like died from what seemed to be complications from his time in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And and that guy was, you know, supposed to be the next president of the United States, but it didn't work because the sacrifice that he made for his country, something that Donald Trump, it's so infuriating. Donald Trump is just so good at giving people who are upset stuff to complain about that they end up complaining about stuff that's utterly contrary to what they themselves, if you didn't have Donald Trump around, would profess. Yeah. Yeah, I I I especially wanted your read on that because like I would prefer something a bit harder hitting, but it wouldn't necessarily appeal to the sort of voter that I guess he's targeting this for that maybe does want something a little bit more just sort of like able to hook people who might get their like hackles up over something more aggressive maybe. 
it just it feels very much like his 2020 campaign, which to his credit, he did win. There was some context of the pandemic and everything, but he did win. And you know, I didn't expect him to. So I'm trying to be, I guess, a little bit more open minded to his strategy this time around. But um, I hope that your read is right. Uh, because I think that those veterans are 100% right about him. It's amazing that none of those scandals that we talked about really seem to hurt him at all in the right. These lines that would have ended careers 15 years ago, like attacking John McCain and mocking soldiers, mocking the generals, like it's just madness. <laughs> right. Absolute These, madness. The same group was like, you know what? Uh, John Kerry wasn't exactly the uh, something something swift boat. Yeah, they don't even Sunk. know. What he literally he did Sunk serve. Him. Serve. Yeah, I, I, we live in mad times. Members make a difference here at TYT. You help make the show happen, and we see you in the chat with your loyalty badge. Click the join button to become a member today.